Hi guys and welcome to your weekly horoscope. This one is for Monday the 15th of April going through until Sunday the 21st of April 2024. Thanks for joining me. It's a pleasure to be with you today. I'm going to go through each day of the week to see what the planets are doing and how they'll influence us and then I'll go through each sign of the zodiac from Aries through to Pisces to give you a specific message for your sign this week. And also at the end I'm going to do a little tour around the park here once I'm finished because this is the last time I'm coming to this park. I'm moving tomorrow so I'll just um, show you what this looks like because I won't get to come here again. Okay so let's start with um, Monday the 15th and what I noticed about this week overall is that you're going to have this amazing desire to learn and you also have an amazing ability to problem solve which is kind of interesting because we have Mercury, the communication planet, in retrograde at the moment. So it appears to go backwards and that often causes problems with communication and transportation. So things are delayed or they don't arrive. The good thing about a Mercury retrograde is that we're able to see things from a different angle, from a different perspective and find different answers and different solutions. And this Mercury is in Aries. Aries is the first sign of the zodiac, it's the sign of the ram. So I really think that you kind of bulldoze your way into areas that you haven't explored. And because of that, you have so much access to information this week, which is really going to help you moving forward. So really pay attention to what comes up this week. It's gonna be significant and useful when it comes to problem solving in any area of your life. Okay, so Monday the 15th of April, we have the moon in Cancer. The Cancer's, um, the moon rules Cancer, so it's very happy in that placement. The moon represents the mother, your intuition, your feeling, your imagination, creativity, a sense of home. And Cancer is a water sign that's in a cardinal mode. And it's very much about being the parent and taking care of others and kind of provi providing um, spiritual guidance and counsel as well as physical support and healing and intimacy. So with the moon in Cancer here at the beginning of the week, it immediately puts you into a spot where you're emotionally very aware and sensitive. It then squares the sun, Mercury, the communication planet, and Chiron, the wounded healer, and all three of those are in Aries. So it's, a, it's not a perfect match between fire and water. Whenever those two connect, there's a, the question of balance. It always has to be well moderated is that a word no it has to be um you know too much fire in the water evaporates too much water and the fire goes out so it's important to do a little bit of both when these two interact so the sun is what you're striving towards it's it's what you identify with on a conscious level so the sun in aries is really going to prompt you to take action here on monday the cancer moon then though says look at your relationships and practice good self-care. So immediately on Sunday, we're coming into this dynamic where it's back and forth. You're not quite sure what's the best thing to do. And that can be a little frustrating at times. The Cancer Moon then also trines Neptune in Pisces, the water planet in the sign that it rules. So huge amounts of imagination, creativity, the ability to connect. And it sextiles Jupiter, the lucky planet, and Uranus, the planet of the miraculous, where anything could happen, and both of those are in Taurus. So it's kind of interesting because it says that if you do take independent action in a practical way and use all this fire that you have access to and channel it into the earthy stuff of Jupiter and Uranus and Taurus, an earth sign, you're likely to have a good outcome. At the same time, with the Cancer Moon and Neptune combo, we have this um, amazing ability to tap into your own intuition so if you're doing readings that's likely to go very well on monday or any kind of healing work creativity imagination relationships any of the things connected with water really so you see on monday you can excel in both areas in the realm of your relationships as well as taking practical action in the real world and then finally we have mercury in aries and also in retrograde and that conjuncts chiron in aries so that's the message. I want to do things differently. I want to see things differently so that I can heal myself and that I can um, retain more of my own power without giving it away. And giving it away to other people or giving it away to past trauma that my body remembers and it's a weight I carry around with me every day. I, I'm able to heal those kind of things and let go of them. So you see, it's, there's a lot happening here on Monday. So because of all of that, you may find it really difficult to prioritize. 
Um, do you focus on your relationships or do you focus on taking action and making progress? Again, like I mentioned with the actuals of the elements, water and fire, I think it's a good idea on Monday to try and balance things as much as possible and to keep your eyes on things. To multitask, you'll be able to do that very well. And um, try and do a bit of both or several things of what you most enjoy. So whether it's being around people or getting things done or working on a particular project, just make sure you keep the day somewhat varied and you don't just focus on one area because that then could cause problems as in, oh, I feel guilty, I've neglected all these people because I've been working all day or vice versa. So a um, bit of everything on Monday is a good idea. On Tuesday, the 16th of April, we have the moon going into Leo at 24 minutes past four in the morning. So the moon in Leo is far less concerned with the well-being of the family and it's much more interested in um, doing things that are empowering and um, that you can do independently. Anything to do with being in the spotlight or receiving attention or applause or validation, good feedback or being a leader motivating other people, influencing other people, all of those things become much easier on Tuesday the 16th with this shift of the moon. And the moon then opposes Pluto and Aquarius, the outer planet that's furthest away from us. It's in Aquarius, so it's the rebirth of ideas and the desire to connect people to each other for the greater good. So the Leo moon is going to get really excited about new ideas and um, things that you can learn about that you're not familiar with, ideas that promise to kind of have a positive impact on society or the planet or other people around you. So it's a, the scope is really, really big. And if you think that's, you know, impractical, like, you know, how am I going to change society by learning about new ideas, then just kind of reserve judgment on that and um, see what you're exposed to information wise and really what does interest you. Devote yourself to that and it can bring up that fire within that Leo feeling of, I am gonna do something with this and I'm going to put myself in a position of leadership or I'm the instructor or the teacher and I'm going to help other people with this. So Tuesday is a lot more straightforward than Monday. As you can see, we have far fewer influences. We just have fire and air Whereas on Monday, we have all these other things. We have water and fire and earth. So on Tuesday, it's really about letting yourself be motivated and fired up around ideas and things that you do find interesting. So Tuesday, you're gonna feel energized. You're gonna feel motivated. Anything that requires you to be in the spotlight or to present to an audience or to present yourself to a committee or board, all of that's gonna go really well. It's likely that um, you will come across information on Tuesday that really presents you with a completely new idea that you've never come across ever before. So this is likely to really um, get your attention and to fascinate you. And ultimately it's there for you to look at other bits of information that allow you then alternatives or different kind of solutions that you hadn't considered in the past when it comes to any of the issues that are going on in your life. So anything you're not particularly happy with, a relationship or working situation or living situation or health, really inform yourself on Tuesday and see what you can learn about that, that subject. It's very likely that you'll find something of interest. You know, it's, so, it's, it's always so interesting when something's going on for you, right? Like either in your body or you've got a problem in your everyday life. As soon as you talk to other people, my experience has always been that other people have either been through it themselves or they know someone who's had a similar experience and there's always information or good information that comes out of those kind of connections. So whether it's talking to other people on Tuesday or you know going online or it's, and researching about a particular topic, do that, you'll get a good answer. On Wednesday, the 17th of April, we have the moon still in Leo, so confident, warm, um, interested, motivated, engaged and it squares Uranus and Jupiter in Taurus. So there's friction between what could happen in a practical sense and good luck and good fortune. And the Leo moon then also trines Venus, the planet of love, beauty, and creativity. And this is the first appearance that she's making this week, really. Um, Venus, Mercury, and Chiron, and they're all in Aries. 
So I want what I want when I want it. I want to heal. I want to get my point across. I want to learn um, about things that aren't perfect in my life and how I can adapt them and change them and make them better. And the Leo moon also quincuxes Saturn and Mars in Pisces. So this is complicated again, you see, because it's, um, do I focus on practical actions in the real world? Do I focus on my inner life? And Wednesday is very similar to Monday in the sense that you're going to be pushed and pulled back and forth. So um, Wednesday is another complicated day where it may feel like a bit of a struggle to get everything done and to maintain an inner sense of balance. What is supported on Wednesday is your creativity via Saturn and Mars and Pisces and leadership still supported by the Leo moon and good results based on um, those kind of actions and also good results when it comes to your creativity. So you see, um, it's a good idea to say what's most important to me on this day and I'm going to try and keep it simple on Wednesday. Give yourself a little bit of extra time um, either to figure out what your personal interests are or what's most important to you on Wednesday and um, how you can engage with that first and foremost but then also tend to the other things in your life that need your attention and your care. Thursday gets much simpler again. Thursday the 18th of April we have the Leo moon forming a trine with the sun in Aries so we've got the heart in a fire sign, Leo. We've got the head, what you're moving towards, also in fire, in Aries. So Thursday, you're back to, I'm super motivated, I'm keeping things simple and I want to move forward. It quincuxes Neptune in Pisces. So this is interesting in two ways. One, you're able to channel all that watery energy and to express it creatively. Or you're able to pursue the dream. You know, so if the dream is, I want to visit a particular location or I want to purchase a particular thing for myself that I've saved up for um, or it's simply I have an idea in my mind and I want to make it visual or express it through words. So the big theme that you can notice as I'm talking here is the dream is accessible to you on Thursday and then with all that fire whether it's um, in a literal sense or in an abstract sense, like I'm actually buying something that represents the dream or I'm moving in a direction that will help me to get to the dream. That's what's important on Thursday to say, what is my top priority right now? The moon then goes into Virgo at 10 minutes past four in the afternoon. And that's a really good thing because Virgo is ruled by Mercury, the communication planet. And Virgo is the setting of, I want to gather as much information as possible, break it down in order to analyze it and to make sense of it and to create meaning from it on my own. So we do have Mercury in retrograde until the 25th of April, but with the moon going into Virgo on Thursday the 18th and staying in Virgo until Sunday the 21st, these one, two, three, four days are going to be less prob problematic when it comes to communication or transportation because of that moon in Virgo placement. The Virgo moon also quincuxes Pluto and Aquarius. So you see now Virgo is sitting there and like with a giant funnel and all the ideas are just being poured in and it just keeps saying more, 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 more. So you have access to so much info this week and because Mercury is in retrograde, you're willing to consider information and ideas and topics that you usually wouldn't be interested in or you wouldn't be able to see their relevance. So you dismiss it under normal circumstances. You won't do that here on Thursday. So Thursday, with all the fire we've got, you're really in action mode, um, but you may be a little interrupted by the dream or strong feelings that you've got um, that are prompting you to kind of pay attention to yourself. That could, again, make you a little irritable. Like if you've picked something and you're like, I just want to get busy getting what I want or moving in a particular direction, and you're constantly um, having to listen to kind of inner messages or strong feelings that come up, it could make you feel slowed down, interrupted. So again on Thursday, um, give yourself a little bit of extra time and be patient with yourself. If you have something important that you're studying at the moment or that you're working on, make sure that you avoid any issues by putting the do not disturb sign on the door to avoid wasting time and to avoid the kind of situation where someone disturbs you and um, 
you don't react very well and you're like I specifically asked you not to disturb me and you came in three times and then the other person instead of saying I'm sorry I disturbed you they say how could you speak to me so rudely I just wanted to see how you're doing <laughs> so you know and then you, ha you have to get into a whole discussion about that so save yourself all the problems um, associated with that kind of thing and if you have a task at hand then just make sure that you can you, uh, you unplug the phone or you put it on airplane mode or whatever it may be. Friday the 19th of April we have the Sun going into Taurus at 4 in the afternoon. Solid number just like Taurus is a solid sign. It's an earth sign. It's all about security and structure and um, it's ruled by Venus so it's not just as in this is my money, this is my house, this is the garden. It's really the beautiful things in life and smelling the roses and creating a beautiful bouquet of flowers. Um, and four in numerology is structure and security. So the sun going into Taurus at four in the afternoon. Happy birthday to all the Tauruses, first of all. But the sun in Taurus, what we're striving towards now is an appreciation of beauty, the ability to create beauty, the ability to enjoy the luxuries and the things on this planet and to feel comfortable and loved and at ease because of that. Mars in Pisces sextiles Uranus and Jupiter in Taurus. So if you get any kind of spiritual messages coming in on Friday, it's less, it doesn't feel like it's disturbing you as much. And you may even get a sign via um, a message in the real world, whether you see something and it reminds you, or you see a particular type of flower and that's a message for you. Pay attention to those kind of earthy practical signs that you may get. On Friday the 19th as well, Mercury in Aries conjuncts Venus in Aries. So I want to connect. I want to have um, a beautiful experience. I want to have a romantic experience. I want to have a loving experience, whatever that looks like for you, whether it's by another person or an area or an activity. The Virgo moon also opposes Saturn in Pisces. So thank you, rule maker, but we're not quite interested at the moment. So. I'm working in the here and now on practical things very much is what the Virgo moon would say. And then it also Queen Cux is Chiron, Mercury and Venus and Aries again. So the moon and those three things, Chiron, Mercury and Venus and Aries, they will really want you to now take practical steps to have that experience. So, you know, a few days before it was, am I moving towards an actual dream or is it the dream within? And here on Friday, it's a physical dream a thing that exists on planet Earth and it's really going to prompt you to take action on that. And Friday is not complicated because the spiritual side of things is going to feel very uninteresting and keeping it practical and keeping it grounded is going to feel much more satisfying. So with all of that, Friday immediately feels a lot calmer, like you're landing on solid ground for the first time this week. Um, leave important decisions for Friday if you can because you're in a much more solid kind of easy place where you're not influenced by strong emotions or a desire for even more knowledge. Um, so Friday is a good solid day where you're not going to second guess yourself or question mm, did I not kind of have enough to go on should I have waited. So Friday here We've had four days that have been really intense. With this being the last day of the working week, the four days that have come before, I feel will have prepared you on Friday to make a solid and well-informed decision. And um, the moon is still in Virgo, so that will also help you to analyze the situation and then decide one way or the other. Saturday the 20th of April, we have the Virgo moon still opposing Mars and Neptune and Pisces. And what I get for that is the Virgo moon is small and in Earth and it's ruled by, you know, Mercury, the communication planet. And it just wants to learn and it wants to be informed. And now it's facing off with Mars, which is real ambition and drive and Neptune, the dream. And it's just like, you guys are disturbing me. I'm trying to learn something here. Stop it with all the big ideas. You know, that's how it's coming across to me. The Virgo moon also trines Jupiter and Uranus and Taurus and Queen Cux's Chiron and Aries. So it's like, listen, I've got all these plans here. I'm going to 
the next town over and then I'm going to attend a course and then I'm meeting with friends. I've got the plan here. Stop interrupting me. That's the vibe I keep getting here that it's like I don't want to be disturbed because I know what I'm doing. If you already know what is meant to be done, like if you've had the kind of moment of, you know, speaking to your inner guides and saying this is what should be done, then it makes no sense to continually be in that discussion kind of stationary mode it won't actually achieve the thing right so i think you know what i mean so saturday is much more about the real practical steps you can take in order to accomplish something you're not going to be so interested in meditation and anything spiritual so if you do have a spiritual practice that you do every day or most days saturday i don't think is going to be the most satisfying session you ever have it's just you may be distracted into saying i want to take practical action here i'm getting itchy feet i'm feeling restless Jupiter in Taurus conjuncts Uranus in Taurus. So those two together, practical actions really are a good idea this week because good things can come of them. Yeah, so Saturday is about organization, taking action, making progress. You have little time for things that are abstract or intangible. You don't have the patience for it. So um, Saturday is a good day for exercise, travel, and like a lot of the other days this week, learning and accessing information that provides you with a different kind of viewpoint on things. I find that interesting, you know, like when you watch a story in the media, whether it's like tabloid or something, and a story is told and you're like, oh wow, that's really, you know, and you have a specific reaction to it. And then two days later, you get more information on the same story and your whole perspective shifts. You're like, oh, I shouldn't have been so quick to judge that person because I know the situation now and it's actually someone else to blame. So this is the kind of um, opportunity to see things in a completely different way for the better. And then finally, on Sunday, the 21st of April, we have the moon going into Libra at 5.08 in the morning. So very much about relationships. Now, Libra is a bridge with a bump in it. It's about connecting to other people. It's ruled by Venus. So it's charming, it's creative, it's elegant. It's, it's able to bring people together. Um, the Libra moon then quincuxes the sun in Taurus and trines Pluto in Aquarius. So the ongoing desire for new ideas and learning, but now also the desire to connect with people and to spend time with them and enjoy their company. Venus is in Aries and conjunct Chiron in Aries. I want to connect. I want to have this romantic, wonderful experience in order to heal myself. Same way I mentioned the same thing earlier in the week. Still there. The sun in Taurus squares Pluto in Aquarius. So this is again very interesting because the sun in Taurus, Earth, Pluto and Aquarius, Air. I want all these new ideas so I can build something amazing in future. So that's what this week is really. You have a desire to learn because there's so much good stuff to learn and it will help you in future. Let's see what's happening for each one of the signs. So starting with Aries. So Aries, we had the eclipse, the total solar eclipse in your sign of Aries. So that would have put you in a good spot already. But this week continues to support you, particularly in independent business ventures. If you're looking for new or um, if you're looking to create additional sources of income, search this week and you will find what you're looking for. This is really your time to shine and to make it happen. Taurus. The luck factor is really on your side this week. Go for anything where the odds for success are really small and let yourself be surprised. So if it's like one in a million chance of succeeding, try it anyway and you may... Wow, who could have thought? Gemini, you're the most open-minded sign of the week and you're also gonna have this huge desire for knowledge you're supercharged when it comes to communication and problem solving this week. And because of the Mercury retrograde and because you guys are ruled by Mercury, you'll see things that you'd usually miss. Or again, you'll look at things that you usually would have dismissed already or wouldn't have an interest in. And that's why you get the new solid answer that you've been looking for. Cancer. Expect good news in work. The info that you get, the good news, will either give you more freedom in your work or more flexibility. Or it could be in a literal sense and expect to hear good news about your actual income. So what you're creating through work. 
Leo, if you have the opportunity to travel for work this week, then please do it. A working trip is likely to go really well for you. You're also one of the top students of the week. In terms of the zodiac signs, you're one of the most studious. So learn about anything that you find interesting and give yourself some time to do that. It's not frivolous. It'll give you a solid answer that will help you moving forward. Virgo, you may get some help from an unexpected source this week. If it comes, be open to it, accept it. You don't have to do everything on your own this week. And also there's nothing wrong with getting some help once in a while. Libra, yours is very specific. If you need to apply for a job or a place at university, college, or if you're submitting your manuscript to the publishers, this week really supports you in getting your foot in the door of big institutions, starting that initial connection. So if you want a new working relationship on that level, this is really the week to send out letters, applications, to present yourself and to make that happen, to knock on the doors and say, hello, here I am. Scorpio, you're gonna have a really easy time of it this week, particularly in your relationships and in the way that your days are structured. You're gonna be very satisfied with that. You won't be slowed down much by the Mercury retrograde. So you're going to have very few issues when it comes to communication, transportation and your relationships because they're, I think you're just um, not as affected by it and you're able to navigate it because that's what you do. You get to the truth of the matter and you use your intuition to manage and that's really what sets you apart this week. It means that you have a really pleasant time. Sagittarius, for you guys, it's a great week to meet a new love in your life whether that's a person or a thing or a place or an activity or a subject of learning. If you um, ever take part in like group events that take place outside, then make sure you visit one of those things this week if you're looking for love, because it's likely that you meet someone in one of those things. You know, I was looking, um, there's certain websites that you can um, use to find new living places. And I've always used one of them. And what I noticed on there as well, there's a section where people can like offer themselves for tours. And there's this one guy who does um, tours in the city center and he does it via this app. So people then gather in a group and he shows them all the sites. I, I've always loved sightseeing, that kind of thing I've always really enjoyed. But if you're a Sagittarius looking for love particularly, I think that kind of activity is really gonna be helpful. Capricorn. <clears throat> You have the power of persuasion this week, the gift of the gab, if you will, and you can motivate and influence pretty much anybody this week. So any of the jobs that require that kind of ability, whether it's public relations or you're an event planner or anything like that, you're going to have a really easy time of getting people to see your point of view and getting them involved in what you're doing. It's going to be really easy. Aquarius, you're the master of problem solving this week. You can do this for yourself and for other people. So just engage with the task at hand and you'll find the solution easily. Make sure you don't let um, other people fob things off on you as a result. You know when um, someone asks you to do something, like back in the day it was the DVR, and an easy way to never have to do it is just say, I don't know how that works. <laughs> So you could come across people like that this week where you're so good at problem solving and managing things that other people just kind of throw things to you to deal with. So just be aware of that, people um, taking advantage. And then finally, Pisces, you're really likely to feel at ease this week and to have few problems in the relationship you have with yourself, with your income, your job and your perception of your life in the world. So the water signs, Scorpio and Pisces, you guys are really unaffected by this Mercury retrograde, as in your ability to use the, the water side of things to navigate your life really serves you this week. Um, you're gonna have the experience that things feel really good. Um, everything is right with you and the world. It's kind of, it's the kind of feeling, you know, you wanna bottle and keep forever. So it looks like a really fabulous week for a lot of people. I hope it gives you an idea of what you'll be working with. If you would like a personal reading with me, please get in touch via my website. It's gregoryscott.com. Once you get to the website, scroll down a little bit until you get to the button that says book your reading. Click on that to order your reading. 
or click on the shop tab and that'll take you to all the different types of reading I do. And if you'd like me to look at your birth chart, which I can draw up by taking your place of birth, date of birth, and time of birth. By the way, if you don't have the time of birth, then order a chart rectification on the website. That's a process where you send me 10 or more life events. I can actually work out your time of birth. Um, and then once I have that, place of birth, date of birth, time of birth, I can draw up your natal chart and it really tells me everything about you. It's like a blueprint of the soul. I always find it so amazing that we have access to these things. So it shows me your vocational aptitudes, life purpose, relationships, income, health, spiritual development, friendships. So if you've got any questions or if you want to plan things for the future and you want to see when the best dates are, then I look at the progress chart and the transits for that. And also if you're questioning specific areas of the world, then I look at the astro cartography to see how the planets are moving over different parts of the earth at the moment you were born and how each area then influences you. Yeah, so let me know. Yeah, so please do get in touch if you'd like me to do that. So I'm gonna show you guys a little bit of the park because we won't be coming back here. And also I was hesitating a little bit during this. Oh, this is the end of the horoscope, by the way. I'm just talking personal stuff now. Um, there's a lady sitting here in the park and she was doing yoga. And um, she kept coming up and standing next to me here on the side to kind of listen in to what I was saying. So ho I hope I haven't um, been too distracted by that. <laughs> okay, let's see. I'm just going to pack up my gear and then I will... She's waving at me now. And then I'm going to show you the park. I'm not really up for a discussion. I have to pack up my house now and I have to, I want to finish filming. Oh no, she's just kickboxing. I thought she was coming by. Okay. So, let me show you the park. It's so pretty today. It's so nice how people come out here on a Sunday morning to do all these things. Like she's doing yoga. There are three people here standing in a certain pattern and doing something I'll just check i'm one of those people i always have to go back and check that i didn't forget anything got my phone yep okay so it's so nice that this is um the last day i get to film here because today is the perfect day it's warm it's beautiful i need to go to the hairdresser i haven't been in ages i look like I have a helmet on my head, but I haven't had time. So I'll do that when I'm in the UK. Isn't this pretty? Yeah, and it's really early this morning, so I can get everything done for tomorrow. Lots of early birds catching the worm here. I think they're doing some sort of energy circle or something. Nice. I've shown you guys the pond before. I just want to capture as much of this park as I can. Even if I do come back here, it'll be years before, or well, who knows how long. But it's really my favorite park in Vienna. It's called, the names are always really complicated. It's called Türkenschanz Park. And there's, a, there's an outdoor, um, there's an outdoor pool, like 20 minutes that way. And as well, the, the name for it is wild. Like it's, a, it's this um, outdoor pool on the side of a hill or something. And I, I was gonna tell you the name cause it's so complicated, but I don't even remember, sorry. So I wanna just show you the pond and then a little statue thing that I've never shown you. And I was even thinking of filming here earlier, but the fountain I was just afraid that the noise would be too distracting, you know? Look at all the dandelion clocks. So nice. Okay, so here's the fountain. Yes, and I, and I can hear someone say, Greg, you don't need to be in the picture all the time. I do realize that, but it, I'd have to switch it. So that's why I'm in the camera. So I'm just going to show you this little statue and then that's it. Yes, I do need a haircut. 
So here we are. Can you see it? Oh no, and the setting is blurry, so you won't be able to see it. Oh well. You see on the phone, you can either have video mode and then you just record and the background is also in focus. Or what I discovered recently for the video for Pluto and Aquarius is cinematic mode. And then it puts you in focus and the rest blurry and it looks better, but the files are much bigger. And like in this case, it didn't work for sightseeing. So yeah, learn from my mistakes. All right, guys, I hope you have a wonderful week and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.